thousand times again um, in England it was played lots of times after after the, the World Cup um, I can remember David Beckham passing under um, I managed to go to the side of him and then obviously uh, scored and it was um, it was a great feeling I think uh, Paul Scholes one of our players was was right by me at the time and we both ran off to the crowd and it was a great feeling Despite this magnificent strike by Owen in the 16th minute of the game, England were defeated by Argentina on penalty kicks. But for Michael Owen, nothing would ever be the same. Small and quick, that's how Owen is described in England. Although he's only 5 foot 8, he possesses the speed to run 100 metres. It's the new image of English football. He has become a symbol for his country, where stars such as Alan Shearer, David Beckham, Steve McManaman, Paul Scholes and Darren Anderton have dominated in recent years. With the addition of Owen and his burgeoning maturity and know-how, the English look poised to be among the favourites, assuming they can qualify for World Cup 2002. Michael Owen was born on the 14th of December 1979 at the Countess of Chester Hospital in Chester, a town with 120,000 inhabitants close to the Welsh border. Chester is a beautiful town, known for its architecture and art that date back to the Middle Ages. But the area's image is changing. This is now Michael Owen country, and it's more talked about than ever. Michael now lives across the border in the Flintshire town of Harden, but returns home to play golf and to attend the odd race meeting from time to time. Michael Owen was brought up by Terry and Jeanette Owen in this delightful community. The streets, gardens and parks were all used as football pitches for the town's youngsters. As a very young boy, it seemed that Michael was destined to play the game. His favourite toy was a football, and his father, Terry, had played professionally for Everton, Bradford City and Chester. He used to take Michael to training all the time, as the youngster was keen to play football as well as his older brothers. The first day I played football was probably in my back garden. I have two brothers and two sisters, but my brothers both used to play football as well. And they're about 10 years older than me, uh, 9 and 10 years older than me. So uh, I always try to be as good as them, and uh, that's probably why I improved uh, quite quickly. And uh, it was in the back garden at the local parks that I used to play football. A happy family life and a love of sport played significant roles in Michael's development as a footballer. His entire family have always been noted for their athletic abilities. In addition to his father's professional football career, his mother had favoured athletics in her youth, excelling as a sprinter. His older brothers, Terry and Andrew, are also footballers. His older sister, Karen, a hockey player. And his younger sister, Leslie, is a netball standout. All of them have inherited their mother's speed. All my family have, have, been, um, have been fast. My dad, as I said, used to play football and he was always a fast runner. Um, my mum always used to be a fast runner, so um, generally you, you see that the, the sons or the daughters of your, of your parents uh, are similar to your, to your parents and um, thankfully I've, I've been passed on uh, quite, a, quite a bit of speed. My brothers used to play for their local football teams um, but then on a Sunday we would go down to the park and, and I would always try to be as good as them, they were better than me because they were 10, year, ten years older than me but I was always try to be as good as them and maybe that's why I improved quite quickly and I was, I was quite good when I was young. Um, and I think I'd like to think, well, they, they hope that it was that reason why I'd be a professional footballer. Michael was given his first pair of football boots at the age of seven and began to play his first organised football for the Harden Pathfinders Cubs. It was here that he first showcased his skills as a player and it wasn't long before Michael began to stand out from the rest of his teammates. The first team I played for was uh, my local team called Harden Rangers um, and there were people playing that just enjoyed football. It doesn't matter whether you were good or not very good. Uh, you just played football and in the games the score would be 10 goals and the other team scored 8 goals and things like that. It was just a fun game and normally you'd score uh, lots of goals in the game. Um, but when, you, when you're a child it's all about having fun and, um, and, and scoring lots of goals and enjoying football. 
One of Michael's first football coaches in Harden, Pete Letcham, remembers clearly Michael's abilities and his focus on hitting the back of the net. Michael is exactly right. Uh, football, soccer is a sport that doesn't, uh, it's not determined by the size of the player. If you are skillful enough, if you have the speed, then you are big enough to play soccer. And he's proved that. I think a key ingredient in soccer at the highest level is speed and skill. And Michael has both of those in abundance. Michael's potential was great when he arrived. He was very quick. He's always had that speed. He was very skillful. And his determination was there for everyone. It was similar with a number of boys his age at that time. But Michael's difference was his great speed and the skill, which was developing all the time. So we could see how far he would go, but nobody knew the level he would be at today. He didn't, everything he did was just score goals. So the first year he played, he broke all kinds of records. And every time he used to get the ball, he just used to score. And he, so quick as well, his pace as well. So every time you give him the ball, he just used to score goals. So you could always, he always knew he was going to go somewhere. Um, I think I've always been much faster than the other boys. Uh, I was always quite a good runner. My parents were always uh, good runners. Um, I think that's always been the case right the way through. And if you if you were just fast, then you'd you'd run in the Olympics or, or whatever. So you need to have uh, other skills as well. Um, and over the years, I've I've hopefully picked a lot of them skills up. Being small in stature, Owen was forced to find ways to counter the stronger, more physical play of his opponents. He would compensate with his pace, but more importantly, with his mind. His father taught him how to use speed to his advantage and to outthink his opponents, telling Michael time and again that physical abilities can only get a player so far. It's the thinking man who can reach the highest level. I think you need both uh, qualities because if you've got a good mind and you believe that you're going to be a footballer but you can't, um, you're not very fast or you're not very big or you're not too... Physically, it does help to be fast. Uh, physically, it's, it, it doesn't matter whether you're small or big, you can still be a footballer. But I think physically is important, but I think the most important is your, is your mind and being confident that you're good enough. Um, and that's, uh, that's probably the, the biggest uh, thing that you've got to believe it, or if you don't think you're going to be, you never will be. The whole of my career, the most important person has probably been my dad, because he used to be a professional footballer as well, so he knew um, what it was all about, and he had lots of advice for me, and um, always told me what I was doing good and what I was doing bad and what I need to improve, and, and he's with you for, the, for your life, so um, he's the most important person. At the tender age of eight, Michael Owen was already experiencing success. In a school league and D-side, Owen averaged three goals per game, finishing the season with a staggering haul of 97 goals, a mark that was better than any player in the history of the league. Owen's exploits would give the scouts from various English clubs reason to look at him. And as much as Michael had already surpassed many of the childhood records of Ian Rush, one of the best strikers in the history of Liverpool Football Club. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, when, when his final year in junior school, I had to play him in central midfield where he scored 30 goals in 12 games. But for the county, he played obviously played centre forward. And in his last year, he broke um, Ian Rush, who was a Welsh international and played for Liverpool's goal scoring record of, uh, I think he scored 90 odd goals in one season. So in total in that season, he scored 120 odd goals, including the 30 he scored for the school so um, that's why he, he still holds the record for Deeside Primary Schools of uh, scoring 96 goals. Scouts from Manchester United, Liverpool and Everton flocked to watch Michael play not knowing that a school's rules prohibited students from enrolling with the youth teams of professional clubs preferring instead that the students dedicate themselves to studying. Michael as a young boy was a very keen enthusiastic boy he had a smile on his face all the time Obviously, he had a love of sport and he excelled in all manner of sports. He did boxing, he was good at swimming, he was good at athletics. Um, he was very good acad academically as well. I particularly remember him being very, very good at mathematics. He was very good at mathematics, certainly way above average in mathematics in class, but he had no weaknesses really in any particular area. He was just uh, an ideal pupil, really. And even though he was very talented in for example, football, he was always wi willing to listen and learn and he listened very carefully to any teacher or coach that ever coached or taught him. But those who knew Michael were beginning to see the writing on the wall. 
Even some of his teachers in Harden recognised the fact that this young boy was special and saw that he had quite a future in football ahead of him. I've never seen a boy at that age who had the ability to, you know, in front of goal, children tend to sort of snatch at the ball and, and panic in front of goal. Michael always had the ability to, to make time stand still and when he was in front of goal, it was a question of passing it into the net. He, he was very, very advanced for his years, very, very quick. It was always my dream to be a professional footballer uh, when I was young. Um, I always believed that I would be because it was the only thing I wanted to be. Um, and the more you play and the, the better you get, then you start to believe and you get confidence and, and you think, I can be one one day. And thankfully, uh, I am now. Soon Michael would switch schools, and this was an open door to all football clubs across England to compete for his services. Arsenal, Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur were added to the list of potential suitors. But Owen decided ultimately to sign with Liverpool. This came as a bit of a surprise, since both Michael's father and his idol Gary Lineker had played for City rivals Everton. Nonetheless, Michael had made his decision. Gary Lineker was my hero because he was, uh, he was scoring lots of goals for England, um, scoring lots of goals for Everton, who I supported when I was young, and uh, he played in the same position as me, so he was the, the natural um, person that I, I followed as a player. I was born um, in Chester, which is 20 miles from Liverpool, and Liverpool are a, a very big club and probably the biggest in the area. Manchester's about 50 miles away. Um, so, I was at Liverpool since I was 11 years old um, and then when the time came at 16, 15, 16 years of age uh, to decide which club, I'd already been at Liverpool for five or six years so I knew everybody, I knew all the coaches and the players there um, and it was close to home as well and I had just been to Lillishaw for two years so I didn't want to leave home for, for much longer. Because Michael was so young, Liverpool had to work hard to get him into the FA School of Excellence at Lillishall, where the country's most talented players trained and lived. But by the time he had turned 14, the application had been accepted. And it was then that Michael left the security of his home to try to develop his enormous potential. Yeah, I went to Lillishall when I was 14 for two years, and that's a very hard thing to do when, you, when you're that young. And going to, to meet other people and, and play football um, with other people. And these are like your brothers for two years. Uh, you meet 15 other players, and these were the best players in England at that time. And uh, it was hard to leave my family and friends, but once you were there, um, and once you've done the two years, it's hard to leave them to come back to your family and friends because you really uh, make a lot of good friends. Um, but that improved my footballing game um, quite a lot. and. Uh, I'm thankful for the times there because they really helped me. There, Michael Owen combined his studies with football and did so with relatively few problems. Before long, he was ready to take on playing football full time. On his 15th birthday, Liverpool offered Michael a three year contract to sign for them. In return, he would earn £600 a week. Michael Owen was on his way. Michael Owen is a quite fast uh, player and uh, he can score a uh, lot of goals uh, and uh, he's always really, really dangerous so you have to be really attentive with, uh, with him and, uh, and uh, now I have used to play with him so, uh, so it's, it's good to play, play with him. Yeah, I have lots of important people at different stages in my life. Um, obviously your family are there all the way through your life so they're uh, the most important. Um, Jamie Carragher is my room partner at Liverpool and, and he has come through. He was started with me um, in the young uh, Liverpool teams and he's, he's come right the way into the first team with me. So has Stephen Gerrard and Robbie Fowler. Um, but now I, I share rooms with Jamie Carragher when we're playing away from home. Um, and we, have, we are good friends and um, he's an important part of the team. To Michael's astonishment, he was called upon as a substitute at a match against Wimbledon at Selhurst Park making his debut with Liverpool's first team at the end of the 96-97 season. At the age of 17, Michael was preparing himself to play in the Premiership and could hardly believe it. First game in the Premier League uh, when I was 17 years old and I played against Wimbledon. I was a substitute and I came on for, for the last uh, 25 minutes. Um, 
we were losing 2-0 and I managed to score one goal, um, but at the end of the game we lost 2-1. Um, but it was a great feeling to, to have been uh, on the pitch and playing with a lot of very good players and at last I was a professional footballer and playing in the Premier League. I think Michael Owen is only 21 years of age, I think he's going to be a great striker. I'm obviously English, he's very, very quick, very, very pacey, great, great goal scorer and an honest player who can only get better, I feel. ...footballer in England, perhaps in all of Europe, and it wouldn't be long before his name became synonymous with English football. Over the course of the next two seasons, Michael developed his game and became one of the most feared attackers in the Premiership. He shared the league's scoring titles in both the 97-98 and 98-99 campaigns. In 97-98, he scored 18 goals in 36 matches, sharing honours with Dion Dublin and Chris Sutton. And in 98-99, he equalled that feat, finishing level with Dwight York and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Michael Owen is one of those special players who, when on song, is nearly unstoppable. In his short career, he has already managed three hat-tricks, a feat many players never achieve even once in their career. But Michael has managed to do it against three teams in the highly respected Premiership, Sheffield Wednesday, Newcastle United and Aston Villa. Michael's incredible success at Liverpool, his hand-in-glove treatment from the press and his undeniable talent all played roles in Glenn Hoddle's decision to include him in the England squad at the beginning of 1998. Owen received the news while indulging in one of his favourite pastimes in his hometown of Chester. I was, uh, I was playing golf when um, I was first found out that I was in the England team. Um, I played about 30 games for, for Liverpool and I knew that the England squad was going to be announced in, in uh, that day and I was playing golf with my dad. And, um, we're not normally allowed mobile phones with us on the golf course but this time I I had my mobile phone and, and my manager called me and said you're in the England squad and I was, uh, I was very pleased. We stopped the game of golf and I was just phoning all my friends to tell them and um, thankfully when we met up I played against Chile. Um, they beat us but I'd made my England debut and I was so happy for that. Owen's debut with the national team came against Chile at Wembley Stadium. He once again found himself in the record books. Michael Owen became the youngest player in the 20th century to play for England, setting the record at only 18 years and 59 days. Yeah, I've broken uh, quite a, a lot of records and uh, some that I probably don't know about, but um, I think playing for England in, in the World Cup and, and being so young, playing in there, playing at 18 years old and scoring, um, that was a, a very nice thing to do. Uh, but as a record goes, I think uh, being the youngest player to, to ever play for England this century and to, the youngest player ever to score a goal for England this century was the best two records. Breaking down barriers and shattering records had become old hat to Owen by now. But it was only a matter of time before he was to become the youngest Englishman ever to score in an international match. The goal came against Morocco in a friendly that served as a warm-up game for the forthcoming World Cup finals in France. Great speed, great touch, and when he runs at players, because of his pace and because of his touch, he is very, very dangerous. Um, he's a young boy, he's got, he's got a great hunger and a great desire to win, and his qualities are very, very dangerous, whoever, whoever he may play against, because of his speed and his good touch. Owen's inclusion in England's World Cup squad didn't come as a shock to anyone. He made his World Cup debut in the first round against Romania and, in typical superstar fashion, scored a goal. Later, after a victory over Colombia, England had assured themselves of a place in the round of 16, where they would face perennial giants Argentina. About the next Ronaldo. So far, yeah, I hope I can have many more happy memories, but I think the Argentina game was probably the best day of my life, yeah. Owen realised what he had done when the media started to compare him with Ronaldo, Maradona and even Pele himself, a player Owen had always idolised. Upon returning to England after World Cup 98, Owen realised that his life would never be the same again. Michael was mobbed by fans upon touching down on English soil and had begun to become something of an icon in Liverpool. 
Um, when I first came back from the World Cup, everything was, you know, there was lots of media uh, attention and, and it was all the world was, was mad for, for a few months. Um, but I knew it would, would calm down eventually. Um, you can't score a goal against Argentina um, in a World Cup every day of the week. So I knew that soon people would stop talking about uh, the goal and maybe concentrate on what other things that I did. Um, so I knew it would just be for a short time, but for a few weeks after the World Cup, it really surprised me how much uh, attention I got. Owen mania had begun. Not since the heyday of the Beatles had a young man from Merseyside caused such an international stir and demanded such attention. But like the Beatles, Owen has again directed a spotlight on Liverpool. The city that suffered so much in the 1980s football-wise is relishing its newfound image as it has taken on that of its favourite son. With the media coverage, the fan adoration, and with each and every goal scored, Owen has offered new contracts from a multitude of companies, asking him to market their products. To his credit, Michael has chosen wisely and only taken on what he can handle. Liverpool knew what they had on their hands and didn't waste any time. They received offers from all over the world for Michael's services, the most serious coming from Lazio, who were willing to pay silly money for Owen's signature. Liverpool decided to re-sign their star man and tied him up until the end of the 2002-2003 season. Despite appearances, not everything has been smooth and easy for Michael Owen in the early part of his football career. In fact, Michael has been fighting muscle injuries that have set him back a long way. His health problems have forced him to slow down the frantic pace that he had previously set for himself, the one that took him all the way to the World Cup finals earlier than any Englishman in the game's history. In the 97-98 and 98-99 seasons, he played in 85 of the 91 games for Liverpool's first team. These matches, the youth international games, appearances for the under-21s and his national team commitments combined to make up one of the most gruelling personal schedules in the sport. The Liverpool manager, Frenchman Gérard Houllier, insisted that Michael saw the best doctors in Europe and encouraged him to be patient, not to try to come back before he was ready. Michael heeded the advice and now is fighting to again be the player who astonished the world a couple of years ago. His injury has made him think calmly about his career and now at 21, he's ready to take on the role of leader of the English national team. The most important thing throughout my career is, is that I've always wanted to be a professional footballer. Um, from when I was a child, um, there was never anything else I wanted to be. I always uh, did everything else that you've got to do when you're a child, go to school and learn, and just in case you're not a footballer. But I think if you have that, uh, if, you, if you know what you're going to do and you know what you want to do, and you're fortunate enough to have um, some ability as well, um, then I think if you, if you concentrate and, and stay um, disciplined and not do any bad things, um, then I think you have a chance of being a footballer. Everybody likes him in, in uh, Liverpool because he's on a uh, youth play of, of Liverpool and uh, he has been very important in the last couple of years for, for Liverpool and uh, of course the uh, whole England actually loves him because uh, he has made some important calls for, for a country and he's still a young player, he can uh, still be better. He's a lovely person, a real nice person. He wants to learn, he's willing to learn, he wants to listen and always he's trying to improve his game and himself. As a person he's phenomenal. You would want him as your son-in-law. Owen's meteoric rise to the top of his profession has taken its toll on him physically. But mentally and emotionally he's handled the fame with aplomb. He's still on the same track that his father set for him a decade ago. Bowen is very mature for his years, and those who know him have nothing but good things to say. After the great goal he scored against Argentina, Michael came to visit the school, and all the pupils got chance, all the students got chance to meet Michael, and he spoke in front of all the staff and all the pupils. And you have to remember, he was only 18 at the time, and he spoke with great dignity, uh, great humility, and he spoke very kindly about his years at the school. The owners of the Queen's Ferry Sports Shop in Harden also have good memories of him. Michael spent much of his time here before rocketing to fame. Well, Michael used to be uh, used to come here for his football boots when he was a young boy, and uh, 
when he was 15 years of age and he had to do his uh, work experience, which is something uh, that all the local children have to do, he, uh, he chose to come here because he was uh, very interested in, uh, in sports. Due in part to his youth, but more specifically his heart, Michael Owen always accepts offers when it comes to helping children and related charities. In conjunction with the BBC, Owen participated in the filming of football lessons in which he taught children some of the tricks of the trade, as well as the importance of hard work and education. This message is an important one as far as Michael is concerned. It's nice that children uh, look at me and, and try to, to hopefully be like me uh, in coming through and maybe coming through a, a football team and, and actually being a professional and then playing for England and uh, they're the most important things and if somebody uh, can see somebody else doing things like that then maybe they can look at them and think it, anything is possible to be a professional footballer. It's important that you concentrate on, on different things like school and, and things like that um, to make sure that you do, um, you do do well if you're not a footballer but then if you're 12, 13, 14 and you have a little bit of ability then maybe it's not a bad thing to, to just concentrate everything on being a professional footballer and also learn at school but uh, you know you need to you need to really dedicate a lot of your life to, to becoming um, skillful at football if, you, if you're going to succeed. And so youthful exuberance, blustering pace, total awareness and the maturity beyond his years combine to make up Michael Owen. He represents the future of English football. From the Premiership to Japan and Korea in 2002, Michael is at the forefront wherever he goes. And his teams go as Michael goes. Fortunately for English football fans, the young striker has broad shoulders and might just be able to lead England as the other great players to whom he's been compared have done for their country.